Hello everybody. Today we are going to be unboxing the contents of these boxes here, which is a UJK cast iron professional router table. Really not looking forward to lifting that cast iron top. Let's get going. So normally the full package comes in three boxes. So this is the leg stand, this is the fence, and then we've got the cast iron top down there. I've also got an extra box of accessories here, such as fine fence adjusters and mitre fence and things like that. These are all optional extras, which we'll be adding to the table. But for the time being, let's get them all open. So to begin with, let's get everything out of the way first. We'll do one box at a time. This is usually what I get wrong when assembling this thing. I end up trying to assemble it all at once and then it just, yeah, becomes an absolute shambles. So it's worth saying at this point that the legs are the same on all four faces. So it's a bit more difficult to get this wrong as opposed to Ikea furniture, but um, we'll see if I manage to prove myself wrong today while on camera. <laughs> so on the ends here, we've got some tapped holes. A lot of people would think that these would probably go on the inside. However, these actually go on the outside. The stretches overhang it and then you throw a bolt through there. So I'm gonna do them up very loose for the time being. So we've got plenty of opportunity to move stuff around if we need to and get holes lined up. So we've got a thicker stretcher at the bottom there and then a thinner one will go at the top. So we'll get each side up on the bench and get the narrower stretchers in place. And I have just realized I've already done it wrong. <laughs> oh, you pillock. It's not a huge issue, but um, these L sections here, they're meant to be down like this. I've already done it upside down. But I'm gonna continue getting these horizontals in place and then I can just take that one out and flip it around while it's nice and stable as opposed to make it all wobbly again. Okay, error all fixed. Now we can go around and snug some of these up. Okay, and then before we start sticking any little bits on the sides and things like that, we're gonna put the feet on because now's a good time while the sides are still flat. Right, so now we need to get the bracket for the foot thingy on it. So I'm looking at the front of my table now this side is going to have the bandsaw next to it, so ideally I want to have it on this side. And then this is where you'll be attaching the mobility wheel. you just got to remove all of these Allen bolts first. So now we've got the plate, we'll attach that through the top to the bottom of the bracket. So it doesn't matter what orientation the front and back brackets are, but it does matter that these side ones have this L facing downwards. And then the mobility wheel gets attached through the back of this. And then on the opposite edge, you attach the brackets for the other wheels. And then for the wheels, unthread the nut from the bolt, put the wheel through, get a washer either side, nice and easy, through like that. Now, of course, you don't want to do this bit too tight or else it's going to bend these brackets in. And then, of course, they might get stuck like that and they'll be permanently clamping on that wheel. So just nip it up until this nut hits the edge of the bracket there. Thank you. 
And then what we need to do is adjust the feet so they're level with the bottom of the wheels. And that way the stamp down foot thingy works as intended. Right, so now we will get attaching the racks to fit on the side. I probably won't use these in the long run because I'm gonna be building a router bit cabinet at some point in the future, but this will suffice for the time being. My router bits are an absolute state at the moment, just chucked in a drawer and yeah, not the best storage solution for something that you wanna keep nice and sharp. Almost did it on the wrong side, that's what we want. We'll add the mitre fence holder. This is nothing special. This just clamps anywhere along the frame. So these long screws go through it, engage in the back half, and then as that tightens, it just pulls the metal plate into it. And then that is the leg stand complete. So it is absolutely rock solid. Like I'm pretty sure you could just stand on this. Easy, really good support base for it. Now we need to get the cast iron top onto it. So this top is 41 kilos. And of course, I'm not encouraging anyone to try what I'm about to do and get this onto the router table with one person. Now we need to get the old insert plate out of our box of goodies. But before inserting that plate, we need to put some leveling bolts through the underside of the router table. It's worth saying that those leveling bolts on the bottom there are to accommodate different thicknesses of insert plates. So because I've gone for the thicker plate being the 10 millimeter one, I don't really need to call on those leveling bolts too much because this is pretty close to being flush as it is. I can just fine tune it with these grub screws in place here. Whereas if you've gone for the six millimeter plate, you're gonna to need to bring those leveling bolts up a little bit further than what I have here. Right, so now we can start thinking about attaching the fence and side rails. attaching the side rails to begin with. So these side rails are in two parts. You've got to put this on first and then you've got to put the other side rail on. This gives you adjustment front to back as well as sideways. So that's why it's in two parts in case you're wondering. From there you should be able to slide on the actual brackets themselves so you've got some square bolts that will go in the t-track to begin with and then make sure you get the scales the right way around because they are oriented for the left and right side of the table We'll start adding the fence so it needs to detach the nuts from these upright clamps slide those into the t-track on these side rails get the fence in place and then thread the washer through the clamp and screw that into the nut that's in the t-track and then you've got the sliding fences that will fit in here you just need to get the t-bolt that will attach it to the back so unscrew one of the bolts from the knobs that goes through the back of the fence like that. Then you need to get three of those in there. And then those will go through the holes in the back of the fence. Then get a washer on there and get the knob locked in place. And 
And then in order to fit the dust extraction shroud, just loosen these ones off a bit, pull the washers back and simply feed it in behind them and lock it down. And so now by loosening all those wheels on the back, you can pull the fences apart to whatever width you want and you get really solid locking along the whole length of the fence once you get all six of these locked down. Now there's also a shroud that covers the cutter here. So we're gonna put two T-bolts into the track there. Then we need to fit these things onto it, which will allow the shroud to be held in place a little bit more rigid and then feed the shroud straight onto it like that. Get your washers on and then lock it in place. As it is, this thing is like the router table equivalent of a spindle molder. It is so rock solid. The adjustments on it are lovely, really accurate. They run really smoothly. It's absolutely lovely to use. You also get a miter fence included with it as well. So there are a few like optional extras to add to this. So to begin with, we will get the precision miter gauge installed. So this is pretty simple to get together. We've got some nailed knobs. Those will go through the mitre block and then just tighten on those square bolts on the end. And then leave yourself a little bit of room on the thread in order to slide the fence on like that and then lock it down. You've also got a quick stop that can be slid on top like that and locked down. And then that's a really nice little feature of it. And then finally, you've got the locking knob. So there you go, that's all locked in place. And then on this, you've got lots of positive stops. So you can lift up that locking knob, spin it round, and then it will positively lock into a few different angles here. And so there is upgrade number one. That fits really nicely in there and you can also adjust the fit of it as well to remove any sort of sideways movement with it. So then to attach the fine fence adjusters, we need to take these longer locking knobs out, get rid of that washer, and then the nut that this was previously clamping into, slide that forward and replace it with the longer silver bracket that we've got in there. Get your fine fence adjuster, clip that into the section below, and then thread that locking knob in and then slide your second bracket up. And then with a washer and the second locking knob, lock that down too. So then if you lock the back knob, you can then turn the little wheels and it'll adjust the fence forwards and backwards in very small increments. Probably not needed, but I quite like it. I think it's pretty cool. So then while I'm here, we'll get some quick stops added as well. We'll get one of these either side of the fence. These things are very handy if you're doing stopped grooves and things like that. Just flip down very easily and they're very secure on there. Then finally, we'll add an NVR switch to the router table, which makes turning the router on and off a lot quicker and a lot safer as well. And as you can see, the blue NVR switch fits the color scheme beautifully. We'll have that up here as high as it can go. So there we go, there is the UJK router table with all of the trimmings, fine fence adjusters, quick stop, precision mitre fence, NVR switch. As I said earlier, this thing is like the router table equivalent of a spindle molder. It is absolutely rock solid and I'm so glad to finally have one in the workshop because I've been missing it for so long. So what I haven't said is you can get a router elevator insert to go in the center of this, then you don't have to adjust the router from underneath. I haven't added that to this table because I'm using the Bosch GMF 1600 router, which has two bases on it. You can take the motor out of either of those bases, so you can put it in a plunge base or you can put it in the fixed base. The fixed base has a router elevator already built into it. So if I have the fixed base permanently fitted under here and drill an access hole through the top, I'll have a router elevator that can also double up as a plunge router by dropping out that motor unit instead of investing the money on an insert plate with a router elevator built into it that essentially only has one use. So I'll be doing a separate video in the future focused on that. If it's out already, the link will be up here, if not in the description. And also keep an eye out because I'll be doing a formal review of this router table at some point in the future. And yeah, that's all I've got to say really. So. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button below. If you've got any comments, chuck them in the comment section below, obviously. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, be sure to press that big red button down there. I'd be incredibly thankful. See you in the next video.